in these recent days, it's important that we focus on the really big issues. And I'm sure at the forefront of everyone's minds over the last few months, it is which serious industrial or marine adhesive or sealant to use. And if that's the question that's going to be on the top of your mind, it certainly has been on mine, so much so that I've decided to come and do a proper big test, a head-to-head -head of as many different serious adhesives and sealants that I could get my hands on. It's going to be more, more or less UK uh, weighted because that's what I'm able to get hold of at the moment uh, in the UK. But of course, I suspect most of these, uh, these high quality products will be available over in the US as well and, and, and all over the world. In fact, what I did notice when everyone was starting to hoard into stockpile uh, loo roll, uh, pasta, all the sorts of things that uh, as we were about to go into lockdown, people thought was most important. Also on that list, of course, were sealant guns. A Couple of good ones here, but I also decided that a broken one, which I was about to throw away, might still have some value on the black market. I'm also not just going to do one part uh, silicon or polyurethane based ones, there are hybrids there as well, and also against some uh, other sorts of chemistry. Um, so we're looking at a couple of epoxy resins um, and also uh, a sort of a vinyl and nitrile adhesive as well, just to give you a bit of a comparison about how uh, one sort of adhesive compares. There are all sorts of different types of strength tests you can do. Of course, there's shear, there's tensile strength, there's compressor strength, all sorts of different types of strength. This time I'm going for a cleave test as it's easy to set up and a fairly useful real world indication of how an adhesive gets on. I prepared 80mm steel bolts and ground the heads back to bare metal. I then stuck these to a fiberglass board which had been sanded and degreased and left for a week so that the slow cure products had time to finish their chemical magic. I then got testing. Those of you in need of instant gratification should probably head over to the results chapter and leave the truly dedicated to stick it out for the full testing process. To allow me to gradually increase the weight on the end of the bolts until the bond failed and without causing a jolt, I hung a bucket and carefully poured in water. Some adhesives fell in an instant and others sag first. I judged the point of failure to be when, if I stopped, the sagging would continue without my help. As you can see, I tested a pair of bolts for each adhesive to make sure that I would know if any of my bonds were faulty or otherwise weird. You'll see in the results that a couple did have variations between bolts A and B, so it could do with the third bolt being tested in future. I also noticed that the break happened in different places. Usually the adhesive itself came apart, but sometimes, as I show in the results, it came away clean from the metal or the fiberglass. Of course, some will suggest I could rerun the test with metal as both substrates, and again with fiberglass as both substrates. I think, though, that it's quite useful to see which material the adhesives prefer to hang on to. Okay, here's what I found in all its spreadsheet glory. I ranked them from strongest to weakest and split into two screens so that it's not too small for you to see, even in 4K. Pause the video on each so you can have a proper look. There's a third spreadsheet where I remove the epoxies and cork, which means that you can really see the more subtle differences on the graph, but I'll come back to that. There are a few main takeaways I noticed. First, epoxy outperforms mastic adhesives and loves bonding to steel but it's not marketed for all weather or marine uses. They're also expensive since the tubes are small. Bostick Simpson range is seriously impressive. That's pretty obvious. Grip fill is also strong despite apparent brittleness, even though the benefits of the extra version aren't in the strength, but in the instant grab. It's not for exterior or marine use though, and was just here as a comparison as many people would be familiar with it. The famous 3M 5200, which some people consider to be almost too strong for anything but permanent fixings designed to survive an apocalypse, was odd. I used both the painfully slow normal version and the fast cure. They're quite a way down the scoreboard, but they failed by peeling away from the metal. I do suspect they'd do much better in a fiberglass on fiberglass shear test. Also, mastic adhesive marketing jargon is really annoying. I suspect a few of them, where I've stated no to UV resistance, would actually do fine in the sun, but the companies have another product specifically for UV stability, and so don't mention it in the data sheets. They need to differentiate the selling points to flog a wider range of products. Another point is that Evo Sticks trade product sticks like Alan is the same as the consumer product the dogs Alan. Presumably they think the public and the trade have different senses of humor. Some of these are sealants and not adhesives per se, some are both. Those at the tail end of the list shouldn't really be pilloried as a result. The all-weather sealant at the end is actually nice to work with and can be painted unlike silicon and is super flexible. I added in 3M's 1099 here, a glue I absolutely love using for bonding fabrics and flexible plastics for Arctic cold weather use. I was surprised how well it did after a few days allowed for the acetone solvent to totally disappear. 
Finally, some of the products won't own up as to what they are. Many are just marketed as hybrid. Frankly, this could mean anything. Their chemistry, their applications, we just don't know, but I'm guessing most are modified polymers. The data sheets are inconsistent and pretty unhelpful. Here, as I said, I've stripped out the comparison products and outliers, so the graph is a fairer comparison between true rival products. My conclusions. Firstly, I've spent a full hour doing more entertaining things in my time. Second, SMP or modified polymers are excellent, Bostick's industrial range in particular. Third, there's more of a difference than I expected, and the legendary brands aren't necessarily the best, and consumer marketed ones can actually do well at lower prices. Fourth, pretty much all top end adhesives are a nightmare to work with and to get a good finish with. Very spidery and hard to smooth, so those you can sand and shape after curing are a bonus. Fifth, I should probably give the 5200s another try without metal bolts to see if they really are worthy of the legend and the price tag. The dial epoxy too, which I expected to be rubbish, and also the CT1 where the results weren't very consistent. Finally, companies should stop messing around with their vague marketing and actually tell us what their products are for and what they're made of. Anyhow, that's it for this test. Feel free to rip apart my procedure in the comment section and go, but what about this other one that you didn't test? I know that you'll all be dying to see me break little blobs of adhesive in shear tests and impact tests, or perhaps after a month in the sun or exposed to seawater. I'll see how I get on as it took a grey rainy day for me to get this one filmed for you. You'll all have liked, commented and subscribed already, so thanks for that. Till next time, back on the boat.